Hello, welcome to Ernest Prattle edition 14. Now, before we get into today's conversation, just a little bit of housekeeping. Could I please ask Plali if you would like the video, subscribe, and maybe leave a comment or share, any of those things, that would be awesome. Now, on to today's guest, I have ex-professional Nottingham Forest legend, and the current base for United Manager, Steve Chettle. So, on to the video. Hello, Steve. How are you today? Yeah, very well, Paul. Not bad at all. Been outside in the fresh air today, so all good. Well, thanks for uh, doing this chat with us today, Steve. Um, I thought what we'd do, if it's all right with your good self, is uh, just start off talking about your, you know, early life and your career. Um, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go right back to, it's probably 1979 stroke 80. Uh -huh. And I know we went to the same junior school, which is the Bullington Junior in Bullwell. And you may potentially be in the same year as our Steve or the year below maybe with Steve Wardle. They come the year below your Steve, yeah. Year below. So in one of my mum's uh, scrapbooks at home, I've got this black and white photograph out of the local newspaper of the Bullington Junior School football team from about 1979-80, circa that, that time. And we've got you on the far right, on the back row. And we've got Steve at the back row in the centre as goalkeeper. Yeah. And some of the names there we've got, uh, is it Greg Savage and... Uh, Lee Witts, Michael, Ta is it Michael Tao? Yeah, Richard Tomlinson, probably. Richard Tom, you've got it. Yeah. So, I understand it. Well, Steve tells me that you was unbeaten all season. So, where did you play in that team, Steve? I did a bit of everything to me. I've got the colour version. My mum's got the original picture of that. So, I've seen that picture. So, I know what yeah. you're talking about. And it's the one outside the school windows. Correct. Uh, so, yeah. So, I'd be... A year below, so I'd be maybe 10 in that, playing in the under-11s. Uh, I started in goal, funnily enough, Paul, when I first started playing for school, when I was nine, and then played City Boys in goal at nine. But by the time I was 10 and under-11s, I, I played out, and I, I just played on the left side anyway, to be fair. But our, our team was fantastic. I'd say I played in the older group, and it was a really good team. Uh, I don't know about going unbeaten all year. I'm not sure about that as a as a record. Steve, but, Steve seems yeah. to think that you went all year. You drew one game against maybe Rufford or something. Okay. Yeah. Well, listen, he's probably got a better memory than me, Paul. To be fair, but it was a really good team. It was a really good uh, intake of kids. Obviously, living in Crabtree, uh, lots of kids from Crabtree all going to the same school. Uh, we just all got on and just enjoyed our football. But uh, after that, Steve. Uh... Then our Stephen went on to find girls and beer and so ended up working in the co-op. Now you, you took a, a slightly different path and I believe, is it around about the age of 13 you managed to get signed up to Nottingham Forest youth team? Well, when I was 10, 11, 12, I was at Notts County. Uh, right. Training with Notts County, training with Notts County in the evenings with Mick Walker, John Ramshaw, and really enjoyed it then. 
the recruitment officer, Alan Hill, left Knox County and went across the forest. So when I was under 14, I left Knox County and went across the forest then. I, you know, I'd left, obviously, junior school, went to, supposed to go to Henry Mellish, uh, which was the filter school for, you know, the ball kids in, in Crabtree and Bonington Juniors. Right. But I didn't want to play rugby pool. Uh, Unfortunately, I, heard, I had but, no choice, Steve. I had to go to Mellish. Yeah, so I ended up going to Derbyshire. Went to Oldham and Derbyshire. Right. Uh, really enjoyed my football there as well. Uh, played city schools all the way through to under 15s. Played for Parkhead at the weekends on a Saturday. Played for Forest representative teams on a Sunday called JCS Garages. So I completely don't condone what I did now for our kids because there's probably too much football and the chance of getting injured are really, really high. But it was just something that you did. There was nothing else I ever wanted to do. You got called in as normal when your tea was ready or when it was dark or you'd lost your ball. That was about it. Yeah, I can remember the old games on the, on the uh, school playing field. be about 27 members on each team. It would yeah, be about no, 42 no all. No, there, was, there was no bibs. No. Sometimes you, you know, didn't use the goals. You used the, you know, jump the It was the goal skins and shirts sometimes. Yeah, try and stay in shirts, don't be in skins. Next goal wins. I might have even joined in at the time, Steve. I'm not quite as athletic as, uh, as Stephen is, but uh, like you say, I, I had no choice. I had to go to the rugby school. Yeah. yeah so I, 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 managed, I managed to escape managed to escape chasing the egg. Well, you did very well. And so you did very well with re regards to your, your footballing career. I understand, was it around about, 1986, the year graduated to the Nottingham Forest men's team. Well, eight, yeah, 85, I left school, uh, went to become a YTS scholar uh, at under 16. And by the end of that first year, I was in the reserves playing with people like John Robertson, who was one of my heroes when I was a kid. Oh, excellent. Um, and then by the time I became a second year uh, scholar, I was training with the first team regularly. And by the end of the year, I'd signed professional contracts as well. So, yeah, I'd done really well in the first two years, playing reserves really early, and it makes you grow up pretty quick as well to become... So, playing for, you know, playing for reserves and being on the YTS, did you have to, like, clean the boots, put the kit out and stuff? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I clean, clean Gary Bertle's boots, uh, Gary Mill's boots, John Metgod's boots. I was tea boy for two years for the first team, so every morning my job was making tea for the first team. And if you got your tea wrong... It all kicked off. Ian Bowie was stippler for a, a good cup of tea. Really? Well, that's one thing. One thing you have learned is how to make a decent brew. Absolutely. And I still make a decent brew now. <clears throat> so, that, I mean, around about your starting area, it's, it's Brian Clough territory, isn't it? Yeah, Brian Clough was there when I first went into the club at 15. Uh, met him for the first time on an evening of appearance. Uh, and it was a little bit daunting. Coming to this man is, is a godlike symbol, really. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but when you get to work with him, especially as a, a young player, you know, he's really, really good with people. We used to have to go to his house and clean his leaves off his garden. But really? when he was there to make us lunch, he used to look after us fantastically well, him and Barbara. You know, and he was a really good, he was a really good person. And he, he looked after people really well. He was from the old school, wasn't he, Mr Clough? He was a manager. He was a football manager. He's not one of these modern-day Pep Guardiola coaches. You know, he managed people and he, yes. he looked after people really well. Uh, when you were having a tough time, he made you feel great. And when you thought you were Billy Big Balls, he'd knock you down a peg or two. So, you know, you learn a lot from good people and how to conduct yourself properly and how to treat others as well. We could do a few of their managers around today, can we, to be fair? Uh, yeah, things have changed a little bit, Paul, in all honesty. Football's changed an awful lot. Uh, and then by the time it got to end of his tenure at Forest in... 92 when Forrest got relegated the game had changed and probably we hadn't adapted enough to survive in the Premier League so hence we got relegated for the year things changed when Frank came in and it all got better again but it's been a bit of a yo-yo for four or five years while I was there and after that it's you know they've just been stuck in this place for well for too long really. So you're not in your Forrest career Steve naming some of the individuals that you played along with at the time because there's some uh, cracking names, isn't there, really? Yeah, I made my debut playing alongside people like Stuart Pearce, Des Walker, uh, Steve Hodge, Neil Webb, uh, Nigel Clough, uh, Franz Carr was in the team then. Uh, the 
see, uh, there's only one Brian Rice, number two Brian Rice, number three Brian Rice. He was playing then as well. Yeah. So played, played with some really good players. Lee Chapman was in the group as well. Teddy Sheringham was there later. Roy Keane was there later. So, you know, I'm really lucky to play with some really, really good players. Well, I can remember the time I actually saw Lee Chapman in a pub in Nottingham when I was running Davnik FC in the Notts Amateur League. And I, Steve asked him to sign up for us, but he says he was busy at the time. So uh, we didn't yeah, manage to get him. Probably busy at the weekends. Absolutely, that's right. But uh, yeah, I think our Steve's highlight was we used to do uh, AC Bullwell and Bullwell FC. We used to play down at Baseford United. The old Mill Street. Yeah. And we, we beat Baseford United in the cup final. So it's going back a bit though, Steve. Before yeah. your tenure, obviously, quite a long <laughs> a time ago. Mine. Yeah. But um, um, in comparison, mate, some of the names you've reeled off, it's absolutely amazing. So what what trophies do you end up with in the end then? Uh, I have two League Cup winners' medals. Uh, I have uh, a ZDS winners' medal, a Simon <clears throat> Cup winners' medal, uh, FA Cup finalist medal. Uh, a championship medal from winning the old first division, which took us to the Premier League. Uh, and I have 13 England caps under 21s. So, yeah, for, for a, a kid who lived in Crabtree Estate when he was a kid, Paul, he's, he's not done too bad. Hey, so you've done absolutely fantastic. I mean, my, my friend Gas Collery, he's a massive Forest supporter. And he says to Ashley, why are you, why you never got picked for the England team? I've been, asked, I've been asked this a lot and there's one really, really easy answer. They were better players than me. What do you think so? Well, obviously, uh, he didn't think so. I thought you were, you were very steady, Steve. Very yeah, steady. Obviously. But like I say, there was, you know, there, there was established players in the team and you're talking people like Terry Butcher and yeah. even Steve, I think even Steve Bruce only got one England cap if he got one. Gary Pallister was playing. Uh, Tony Adams was playing, you know, there was, there was some, a lot, a lot of really good players who were playing in the England team. Sure, Brian Clough right. never got the England manager's job then, really. Yeah, he never got the England job and I only got full England cap, so two travesties. Correct, absolutely right, Steve. In the same, in the same league, yeah. you see those yeah, two, yeah. Really. Absolutely yeah. right, well spotted. Um, and what would you say your hi highlight of your career was, Steve? I know you were, uh, something I remember, didn't you score against Bayern Munich in the Champions League or something? Yeah, I did. In, I think it was 96. Uh, we finished third in the Premier League, uh, which was a fantastic achievement within itself. We <clears throat> qualified for the, the old UEFA Cup, which is now the Europa League. Uh, we got through, I think, four rounds to get to Bayern. Lost away from home. I scored. Uh, we thought, right, we've got a really good chance when we get back to the city ground because it's going away goal. We only need to win 1-0. We got absolutely thumped five. Yeah, we lost 5-1 five, five, at home. Uh, but still. Against the, against the team which went on to win, you were full exactly. of internationals. Yeah, and we listen, we were still this uh, little club, really, compared to teams like Liverpool, Manchester United, and especially Bayern Munich. So we've done really well to get to where we did. You did fantastic, Steve. Very proud of you. Thank you very much. Very proud of you. But, uh, I mean, after that, when you... I mean, I want to ask you a question about your playing, Chris. You know who you played against? Who's the who's the best player you've ever played against? Uh, overall, probably Eric Cantona was probably Eric one Cantona. of the best players. But, but it, it went in kind of eras. Uh, so when I first started playing, I was playing against people like John Fashionu, who was, when you're an 18-year-old kid, was, was scary, really scary. Then playing against Noel Quinn when he was at Manchester City, uh, Mark Hughes when he was at United, and then you... And playing against people like Alan Shearer, Les Ferdinand, you know, Ian Rush, Michael Owen. When you think about Robbie, it. Robbie Fowler. You're playing yeah. with some real big superstars. He was around in that era. He makes the ears stick up on the back of your neck. It's just a slapping hey, I don't think, you, I don't think you realise why you are playing of what you did do. You know, if you say, well, who did you play against now? And you name all these names off. These are superstars, Paul, in all honesty. Uh, and you've been on the same pitch against them and I won some of the games as well. The only team I never beat was Liverpool away from home. That's the only team I've never won at, which is Liverpool. We've won at Manchester United, Arsenal, Tottenham, uh, all those big places we've gone and won, but we never got a, never got a win at Liverpool. Oh, don't worry, Steve. You're our own Bulwark Crabtree Farmer State superstar anyway. 
Well, we all think you're fantastic. See that after after the footballing career, playing days. Um, am I right in saying your first step into coaching was was it with uh, Burton? Burton. No, I was, no, I, went, I just went to play at Burton when they were in the league with Nigel. Right. Uh, okay. Went with Nigel. So I played a season at Burton, uh, then left Burton when I was 35. Another year playing at Ilkeston Town. Uh, under Phil Stamp when they were at probably where we are now at that level of non-league football. And I started dip my toe into coaching at Forest Academy the year that I was playing at Ilkeston. Right, uh, okay. I had, I'd, I'd, in all honesty, Paul, I had no interest in coaching when I finished playing because I thought, right, I've had near enough 20 years at this and I just need a break. So I did the usual things that footballers do, went on holiday, quite a few times, uh, got my golf handicap down. Yeah. And then within then within six months, oh, I was fed up. I, want, I wanted something to do. And my second son, Callum, now who's now at Baseford with me, started training at Forest Academy and went there and got the bug again, really, and wanted to know how do I get involved in this coaching malarkey. So I had to go away, do all my coaching badges, uh, work with the kids at Forest, at under nines, under tens, and stayed there for around about seven years. I worked up to the 23s, but didn't really see a pathway for me at Forest under the coaching staff at the time, which was Billy Davis. So I left and went into non-league football. So uh, you was at uh, Ilkeston Town, for, is it just for a season? or Just for one year, yeah. I was having still trouble with my back. I've had a back problem for a long time. Uh, couldn't get through a season without being injured, so... I chose to stop playing myself, man, but I'd be just coming up, just 36, coming up to 37 the following age. Uh, and I decided to stop playing for the reasons being, I couldn't get through a year without being injured. It wasn't wasn't fun being injured. I'm a, I'm a grumpy when I'm injured. So I, I chose to stop playing. Which So when people say, do you miss playing? I say no, because I chose to stop playing and it was my decision <clears> as opposed to when people's careers are taken away from them through injury. Yeah, mine was a little bit different. So when you got into coaching, I know you had a stint with Ilkeston Town. How did you get on with Ilkeston Town? Uh, we got promotion in the first year uh, when they were in step six, when they just literally had to be reborn again for the for the second time. Right. So I took over in 2017, step six, myself and Ian Deakin and Craig Swinsco got a group together really quickly because we only had two weeks to prepare until the league started. Uh, we got promotion the first year. I left after a quarter of the second season and Ian Deakin and uh, Fowles got them promoted again. So they're in now, uh, they were in step five and they got obviously into step four, sorry. And now that's where they are now. So for two years, we got two promotions back to back, which is a great achievement. So how, how did you come about uh, coming over to Baseford United? Your current club? I, was at Notts, I was at Notts County. Uh, Ilkeston's link with Notts County was through Alan Hardy. Uh, and had, oh, so, so didn't you go over to, to Notts County Juniors for a while? No, I went, I went from when I was managing Ilkeston's first time, I got offered a first team coaching role at Notts County. Oh, OK. So I, after, after a quarter of the season of the second year, went to coach at Notts County, went through three managers in the space of, you know, three quarters of a season. Yeah. Became take a manager twice. Uh, they got obviously relegated to the National League, which is where they are now. And Martin Crothers left Baseford. Uh, there yes. was an opportunity there for an up-and-coming developing club, which is obviously a snowboard over the past five or six years to get promoted. Absolutely. Up. And there was a long-term plan that Chris Munro sold to me, which I was really excited about, which we're still in the process of getting one of our seasons finished. So, Steve, uh, in relation to your, your current club base for United, we're having to deal with this COVID situation at the moment. Tell me how difficult things have been for you now. You've managed to cope with it. Uh, yeah, it's been frustrating more than anything else. We realise that there's a you know there's a, there's a huge world pandemic that you know everybody's had to deal with, and football has to take a side a side step to everything, and we get that. Uh, it's just frustrating the first year, especially being sat in the playoffs and. Second year, only playing nine games, everything being stopped so quickly. 
it was a bit stop start. Uh, listen, but like I say, it's a game of football, uh, and everybody wants to go out and see football uh, for everybody's own mental health and physical health, especially the players and everything else. But you know, we we have to be realistic about it all, Paul. And hopefully, better times are on the way forwards uh, with the restrictions being lifted. And we're hoping uh, by the end of this month, restrictions will be lifted enough for us to have people in the ground on March the 20th, uh, sorry, May the 22nd for this Liberal Cup against Mikelova, which will be great to see everybody before we break up before next season. Well, that will be absolutely fantastic. And in fact, that leads me to something else that's coming up um, the following month. Is it 27th of June? Yep, Sunday 27th want... of June. Yep, Samantha oh. Bertel's trophy. Yes. Uh, well, tell me about Nader. that, please, Steve. Yeah, we're trying to raise money for uh, for a hospice, for Treetops Hospice, where Samantha Burt was Gary's wife at the minute is in there. She obviously she's got pan pancreatic cancer, uh, so it's not it's not a nice situation. But we're trying to do what we can to raise funds for the hospice. You know, Gary's very keen to raise some money for them because they've looked after Samantha for so well. So there's lots of old, older footballers coming down to Baseford on, like, say, Sunday the 27th of June to play a charity game. And afterwards, there's going to be a Q&A session with some, some really well-known superstar footballers and ex-managers uh, afterwards. So it should be a good day, good night. So all them superstars, have you asked our Steve to play? No, unfortunately not. Not at the moment. I think our list is pretty full and Stephen will be <laughs> right at the bottom of the list, if anything, Paul. Right, are you kidding, Steve? He'll be right there at the front then, what Steve's like, to be honest. He'll be right, I think he'll be right at the front when the beer starts to be poured. Absolutely yeah. correct. So, uh, just to give us some idea, some of the names we've got, we've got, uh, obviously, Gary Bertels. Is it Kevin Keegan is going to be down there? Kevin, Kevin Keegan is going to manage one team, yeah. yeah. Nigel Clough's going to manage the other team. I think Kevin Nolan's going to be involved in the, uh, the coaching side as well. Uh, Martin O'Neill's helping Nigel Clough with the Forest Superstars team. So, you know, some good calibre of manager for the first place. And then some of the players that are coming across. Listen, we've not released everybody's name yet, Paul, because we're trying to drip feed it in and not give everybody everything up front. Uh, Absolutely. Sales of, sales of tickets have gone really well. All tickets that are available for the capacity at present have sold out. Uh, so we're hoping that uh, by June 21st, uh, government legislation will entitle us to some more tickets so we can sell some more tickets. But how many, we don't know at present. But if people are still wanting to donate to Treetops Hospice, there's a link on the club shop at Baseford uh, to donate if they still want to contribute towards the charity itself. Well, absolutely, Stephen. I, I should. I, I'll keep my fingers crossed that I can still get a ticket. Guess yeah, I, I would say we just keep looking at social media and the club's website that some more will be released. We're hoping to. Uh, but at present, like I say, it's gone that well that all tickets that we have available for the capacity that we've got at present are sold out. Well, I'm not surprised, but it's for a very important cause. Um, so I do hope it's a sell out and hope it goes really well. Um, as, as is with my, my vlogs, I normally have a routine at the end of our chats to send a message out to a, a special individual. But I've got an extra request for you today, Steve, if that's all right. Okay. Because a friend of mine I went to school with, her name's Debbie Griffiths or Deb Griffiths, is absolute Nottingham Forest super fan right. and if she thought that Steve Chetler was saying hello to her she'd be absolutely made up Stevie to make a day so okay. would you do me a favour first please and just say hello to my friend Deb Griffith Deb Griffith Griffith I'll just put my teeth in Deb Griffiths yeah. please Steve just try and put your own teeth in Paul first. my own teeth in correct hi Deb Griffiths how are you hope you're well greetings thank you very much Steve and the other little favour is my mum's name's Anne. So okay. would you send greetings out to my mother, please, Steve? Anne, pleasure talking to your son, Paul. Uh, nice to see Stephen and Paul down at the Baseball Games. And long continue, may they keep coming down. Make sure they're OK. Absolutely, Stephen. Well, we're going to be permanent fixtures down in the future, pal. As soon as we get back to some normality, we can get down there most Saturdays. Good. So, it, pass my regards on to Chris Munro, when you, when you see him. We'll do. And we'll see you down at a basic game as soon as we possibly get down there. So it just leaves me to say, Steve, is thank you very much for your time today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for talking to us, Steve.
No problem, Paul. Pleasure. Uh, Hope to see you soon. Pint in, pint in hand. All the best with United, Steve. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Thank you, brother. Take care, pal. Bye.